Welcome to the Ventura Rock Spot. Each episode, we're going to be highlighting musicians in and around Ventura County, as well as the bands who come here to play. We hope you enjoy. To my right, we have uh, Chief Lee Bryan, bass and vocals. Here sporting the mighty logo is Matt Diaz, Matt with one T on drums, extraordinaire. Tubbs Pounder. We have Steve Bauman on keys, B3, and super cool attitude. And I'm Phil Maldonado, I'm lead singer. Well, I sing and I play the guitar. Came together with the idea of bringing a hard-edged blues or rockin' blues uh, vibe to some songs that are moderately, <laughs> moderately uh, commercial. And so the elements of blues uh, from our backgrounds, uh, obviously tons of melody and a commercial aspect, but really we wanted to rock it and take the blues to a different level. You got something to say about that? No, I think you nailed it. Yeah. I brought a nail. Nailed it. A lot of it came from our 80s style music, where we rocked out back then, and then we uh, feel the blues, so we put the combination together, and that's what we have. Uh huh. <laughs> Homie said ditto. You can find Fat Daddy Special on any one of the major browsers. We come up on the first page. Uh, you can find us at www.fatdaddyspecial.com. Yeah, obviously YouTube. Our videos are on uh, YouTube. And of course, the mighty Facebook. The band was founded, um, well the band was found when we were at a bar and we looked in the corner and we saw the Fat Daddy special and we picked it up and we kept it. But, alright, no, for serious. Um, myself, I founded the band and I was looking for a specific player, person, uh, to identify similarly with myself in the music. And I had a focus uh, that I wanted to bring forth, and I, I've done that thus far. We've had uh, a little bit of uh, personal changes over the, the three years that we've been together, and it's been a, a cool ride. Good and bad, but it's been a cool ride. And from founding to now, the idea is still the same. The sound is graduated, and the um, I would say the music is even more in depth and more matured. Got something to say? No. <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah. Perfect. It'll also set your socks on fire. Proof. It happened to me the other night. Oh wait, no, that that was you, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it started when I was really young. I actually started, um, I don't know, and um, I was really little. I played, started playing piano, 
Um, it just wasn't cool enough, so I started, uh, got into drumming. <laughs> I didn't think it was cool enough. <laughs> At six or seven, you know, it's just not cool enough. But, um, yeah, I started, um, I got into drums and, uh, and uh, kind of had a good feel for it and um, started playing in school bands, stuff like that, private lessons. And I was around music my whole life growing up. My, my brothers are musicians. Um, my mother plays piano, so that kind of uh, got me into music. I ended up moving out to California to pursue music um, and uh, played in a number of bands in L.A., you know, did the Hollywood scene and everything else. So. Um, Ended up meeting Fat Daddy about a year and a half, two years ago. Actually, about more, more like two years ago, I met these guys um, through a mutual friend, and they were looking for a drummer. And he said, hey, you should meet these guys. You know, they're really cool. They got some great music, and it's really heavy. It's right up your alley. So uh, I reached out to, I think it was... It was you that I was talking on to. On a Saturday. Yeah. That's right. On Came a Saturday. in on a Monday night. Right. And started but nailing it down. That's right. Right, right. right. And, then, and then we started playing. Yeah. But before that was kind of funny because probably six, eight months or even longer, we had talked. We met at NAMM. Oh, that's and, right. And we're talking for a while. And uh, lost touch for, I don't know, six, eight months and eventually hooked back up again. And the rest is uh, history. <laughs> See, I grew up in uh, L.A., and when I was in high school, you know, you're required to join a band. It's the law out here. <laughs> so uh, I was a touring musician at first, um, and I would play with a lot of different styles. I, w I was in an R&B band. I was in a rock and roll band. I played reggae. I played Hawaiian. Uh, and uh, we had, I'd met Chief, like he said, with Solomon Band's R&B Review. And right after that, we were in a country band together. And we had a great time, play, you know, I love playing with good musicians, but I, I felt like I needed to find what my style was. And I finally realized my style is good music. If it's music that's good, the genre is not important. And so Chief called me up and said, I got something good going. And I went down and saw their brand of hard blues and it fits the criteria. In fact, it's fantastic music. So I had to jump on. That's where it's at. I was uh, 13, playing alto sax, and my dad's a musician, so he always had a lot of instruments at the house, and, and a friend of mine came up to me and said, hey, we lost our bass player, and we have a big party to play. We want to play bass. I said, well, I play alto sax. He said, don't worry, just follow the guitar. We'll just play bar chords. Just follow the guitar. And uh, so I asked my dad if I could borrow his bass, played that party, and I came home and said, I never had a response like that playing bass, and I did an alto sax for six years. so. <laughs> Dropped the sax right then, picked up the bass, and then playing a bunch of original bands all through, you know, Sunset Strip, and, and then finally I came to a point I just wanted to be a hired hand. That's when I first met Steve with Solomon Burke, and uh, started playing around, and, I, and our buddy Doug called me and said, hey, you know, we're looking for a bass player in this country band, and I said, I really don't want to do original music anymore, and, but I went and checked it out, and I joined in, and, and uh, we decided to play a party, and that's when Phil showed up. And you know, it didn't do you know it wasn't going very well that night. <laughs> but then Phil's like, "Oh, uh, Doug's like, this guy wants to jam. It's jam tonight." And I'm like, "All right." So uh, we stuck around for another hour and a half and just jamming blues, and then just kept it going. So. It went, yeah, it definitely changed the party. <laughs> Well, I would say our stage show is unique because it's completely and 100% real. There's no airs putting on for the audience. The best
best advice we've ever heard from people are just that. Don't let anybody ever tell you who you are. Stick true to your thing. And But to me, what the best advice ever, ever to me was, don't listen to anybody. Do your thing. There's a, a few people that uh, have come into our life and, and some are still here uh, working with us regularly, but um, I believe the relationships that we uh, find ourselves in should be uh, nurtured and cared for because the same steps you go up are uh, have people on every rung and those same people are going to be there when you come down and if you treat them like shit it's you know it's all on you so you know first and foremost I, I want to say thanks to the people that have supported us when Nobody really knew what we were doing, how we were doing it, but they believed in us. And we each have individual people for that. But we could say our support systems um, at home, our friends uh, and, and our family members. But the business people of that, I would definitely uh, say Zach Garfinkel from, uh, from the Canyon. Uh, I would say uh, uh, Ventura Rockspot. I would say Michelle Hoover. She's, uh, she's a great lady and she goes out of her way to do good things for uh, people that um, are, are trying hard and I think that's cool. Uh, there's a lot of other bands out there that support us and we're not in competition with them. We support the other music that's out there. Um, they're doing their thing, we're doing our thing. We don't have to be in competition. When we play with a super band above us, they're our competition because we want to kick their ass off the stage. And why? They've had their time. It's our time now. No, just kidding. The stage, <laughs> stage is big enough for both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's gonna give it. Ain't getting nothing with us. That's all I got to say about that. That guy's all I got to say about that. <laughs> First band I've ever been in where everybody has a beard, even the women, and uh, that that makes us family, man. That's all I want to say.